Fire Up Your Friday. Fired Up Friday. With Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. I am Steve Spiro, the Master Connector. Over the next hour of this Master Connection series, we will take a deep dive into the different ways to connect and network effectively. See us and hear us right now. So LinkedIn, we are on here. We're getting ready. Hear from experts along with Steve Spiro, who went from being shy and introverted to the Master Connector. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. It is Friday. It's close to 2 p.m. You know what time it is. This is the Master Connections series. We're going to be talking about networking versus connecting today. Please like, share, hit those little uh, thumbs up, hand clappy emojis, support emojis, heart emojis, insightful emojis, curious emojis. I am so excited to be coming to you live with the crew. We're going to get Steve Spiro on here in a moment. I'm going to go through introductions, and then we're going to get right into our conversations. We already got chats coming in. Pat Laurie, thanks for uh, joining us. Michael Sylvester, thanks for joining us. I know we got more folks coming in on the chat. Uh, Please let us know where you're viewing from. Even if you told us before, we always love hearing it. People love hearing uh, where people are coming in. Braden was on my show, Biz Dev Live, this morning. Uh, He's checking in from Mansville, Texas. We got the Cole crew here. I'm going to go into introductions really quickly here. Uh, I'm going to first introduce our master connector himself, Mr. Steve Spiro. Here we go. Steve Spiro is a martial arts black belt and a master networker. He has moved from being a shy introverted kid to the master connector he is today. Steve Spiro is a certified customer communications consultant with Quadient, where he consults and mentors companies to help them find more effective ways to connect with their customers. Steve Spiro believes in the power of mentorship, growing oneself through self-development and continuing to create meaningful connections through building a large network. Welcome to the stage, the master connector himself, Mr. Steve Spiro. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. I was almost going to talk while I was muted there. Uh, Well, well, thank you, Cameron. Hey, hey, so hey, folks, it's Steve Spiro, the master connector, and Cameron and I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, As you know, every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, we come at you with engaging content on how you too can be a master connector. So during this Master Connection series. Each week, our goal is to gather subject matter experts, as you'll see, uh, to impart their wisdom on us. Welcome to the show. Uh, I am absolutely blessed to have my co-host, Cameron Toth. Uh, Cameron Toth is the host and founder of BizDev Live. Uh, Cameron Toth founded Toth Event Staffing in 2011. Uh, Toth uh, Event Staffing is a hospitality company providing staff to caterers, cafeterias and catering companies in Westchester, New York and New York City. BizDev Live was founded in 2020. Uh, BizDev Live takes Cameron's entrepreneurship experience and combines it with his passion for helping young people and businesses, business-minded professionals. Cameron Toast's mission in life is, to, is increasing access to education and opportunity for all people. So please bring to the stage, my man, the Wizard of Oz behind the stage, Mr. Cameron Toth. Thank you, sir. I will just shout out my folks. And also for all my um, folks that are in the community, I know we got some folks that are checking in like uh, Nina Steiner. Uh, I just posted a link in the chat. Uh, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. That's going to allow your face to show up uh, when we're throwing your comments on screen. So it just doesn't say LinkedIn user. Uh, We love seeing you in the broadcast. So just go there and allow access. Uh, Even though it says Facebook, it allows it for LinkedIn. It's just uh, the StreamYard platform. So just give them permission. Uh, Thanks for uh, Michael Sylvester checking in from Boston, Massachusetts. Chris Januski from Yonkers, New York. Uh, I think that was uh, Nina from, or no, uh, who's coming in from North? Northern uh, Stephen J. Schreiber. So you can just go give that permission too if you want to show up in the broadcast. We love hearing from everybody. Jennifer Henderson in the house from Brooklyn, New York. 
Braden saying hello. All right, I'm going to keep introducing our folks here. Uh, keep telling us where you're tuning in from. We want to hear your questions and commentary in the chat. Uh, I'm going to go to Mr. Adam Holter. So my man Adam here. Adam Holzer is an entrepreneur with a love and passion for working with fellow entrepreneurs. As a master connector himself, Adam prides himself on building strong relationships with trusted business professionals. As a young professional, Adam is trailblazing a new territory of outsourcing business development. With a core focus on strategy and implementation, Adam is a trusted advisor for business owners who feel successfully stuck. Adam and his wife, Laura, of four years reside on Long Island, New York. They're blessed with a three-year-old daughter, Molly, and newborn son, Jackson. Congratulations, Mr. Adam Holzer. The Holzer family loves Sesame Place, walking local towns, and visiting children's museums. Please welcome to the stage, the Connections for Hire King, Adam Holzer. Please say hello to everybody. Thank you very much for having me. Very excited to be here and looking forward to being part of this with everyone. Excellent. We're going to head over to Jason. Lebowitz. Jason Lebowitz is the founder of XXO, the platform built for connection to self first. He is on a mission to accelerate human connection and transform 1 million lives by 2025 by restoring connection to humanity through XXO Connect, a safe, private social community network that eliminates trying to gain likes, followers, and the pressures of posting, comparison, distraction, and addiction of social media. The non-business, non-networking, non-social media platform focuses on deep human connection, providing the cure for both the loneliness and isolation epidemic and fear of vulnerability and intimacy. XXO Connect is built for real connection, real community, and real conversations anytime and anywhere. So relevant to today's conversation, no matter where you are in the world, you are never alone with XXO Connect. In XXO, we are all already connected. Connect with XXO members without the need to send an invite, link, connection, a friend request with their exclusive XXO Connect video chat messenger, live interactive classes, and weekly series connection over convenience, xxoconnect.com. Please welcome to the stage the human connection accelerator, Jason. Lebowitz. Please say hello. Thank you so much. I believe I'm in the right place today. So thank you guys for inviting me. I appreciate it. Excellent. All right. We're going to go over to Miss Natalie Goldberg. Natalie Alicia Gold, otherwise known on LinkedIn all over the place as Natalie Money Mama Goldberg, is the founder of Goldberg LLP, a law firm which focuses on asset protection and trusts and estates. As an award-winning attorney, rising star, super lawyer, five-time best-selling author, and a nationwide speaker about families, the transition of wealth and money issues, Natalie prides herself on being a fearless cheerleader for her client's success. Natalie is an influential industry leader thriving on and off the camera. She has appeared on television networks and shows including CNBC, Fox News, CBS, HLN, BBC, and Good Morning America, as well as being featured in articles in CNN World, Parents Magazine, The New York Post, Star Magazine, and Cosmopolitan, to name a few. Natalie believes in love as her guiding value and ensures that each and every client feels seen, loved, and respected. At Goldberg LLP, you can leave a legacy of love. Please welcome to the show, the money mama herself, Natalie Alicia Gold. Thank you so much. So excited to be here. Cannot wait to be on this amazing panel and spread some love. Excellent. Thank you very much. We're going to go over to Raquel Boris. Raquel Boris is the Chief Excitement Officer of True to You Branding. Raquel's passion is to help you bring to life a personal brand that is true to you. Raquel's expertise in social media and branding started with LinkedIn, where she studied other social media moguls and influencers because of her love for people and her talent for audience engagement. Raquel's social media presence continues to increase very quickly. Raquel believed that bringing valuable content, authenticity, and vulnerability to your social media is the key to gaining a strong following and presence. Please welcome to the show, the rocking Raquel Boras. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Let's connect. Woo -woo. All right. We're excited. And I want to just uh, shout out to all my amazing people in the chat. Uh, we got folks checking in from Connecticut. We got Stephanie checking in. Woohoo, boss lady. There we go. Christelle 
who is coming in from the UK, London, UK. Thanks for uh, checking in from across the pond. We got Tina Kadish coming in from uh, the Master Network's Danbury chapter. We see you. Ella Weiner coming in from New Jersey. All our New Jersey folks in the house. We appreciate you so much. Uh, we want to hear uh, your comments on networking versus connecting. We're going to get right into the conversation. Steve, get us started off. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, one of the one of the things that we wanted to talk about, the first question is going to be, what's your take on the difference between networking and connecting, right? And and so, you know, it's funny, I was talking to the uh, to the team backstage before we, we went live. And, you know, I had a, a good friend that I a new friend that I made and, and, uh, and he was he was comparing networking and hopefully nobody gets offended by this to prostitution, right? So you're going around just grabbing cards, just, you know, or, or if you're on social media, just growing numbers. And that's not really connecting, right? So networking is, is just a starting point, but connecting is what we do later, right? It's it's kind of the follow-up, it's the follow through, it's it's creating relationship, it's it's how do you add value? It's it's you know, uh, to me, and again, people think I'm absolutely insane. And I don't know how long I'm gonna still do this for, but everyone I connect with, a connect request, uh, after that, after they connect with me, I'm I'm literally asking, let's get on a call, let's get on a Zoom call. Because I really don't, you don't know. And and so you, who knows what that relationship could be, right? Um, if I'm going to bother or if somebody bothers to connect with you, why wouldn't you want to have a conversation so you truly can connect and see where, you know, maybe you could connect some dots. Maybe there's some, you know, value you can add, uh, you know, e either way, right? So to me, it's all about relationships, it's all about connection. It's not just networking. And uh, I believe that every, all the amazing panelists we have on here today, uh, they're on here because I believe they all see the value of, of connecting versus networking. So I'm really, really excited to see what their take is on, on this topic as well. So we got uh, Joanna Poloska coming on. She's been on the show before. She sees one of her favorite people, Adam Holzer. Hello, Joanna. We're glad to see you. Uh, we got Julian checking in from Texas. We got Trevor Narain checking in from New York. Uh, glad to see everybody that's here. All right. So uh, what's your take on the difference between networking and connecting? We want to hear what your take is on in the chat. If you have questions around that, uh, as people are talking, we really want to hear. And no question uh, is irrelevant. The more specific the question, in fact, uh, the more we'll be able to help you. And I'm sure that somebody else in the audience has that same question too. So please don't be afraid. Get into the chat and ask those questions. Adam, I know you wanted to jump in. Go ahead. So it's, it's funny. I look at, you know, I've been in business for about 10 years and, you know, I look at networking as very transactional. I look at networking as elevator pitchy. I look at networking, like Steve said before, it is the starting foundation, but what you do with it afterwards is what makes a difference. And when I look at the difference between networking and connecting, I think of, think of your best friend. When you first met your best friend, did you know you were going to become best friends? It's the same thing with networking and connecting. When you meet somebody, if you don't genuinely, authentically get to know them, you're not going to connect. You have to build the relationship and the foundation. So the difference to me between networking and connecting, networking might be the start of it with a transactional mindset, where connecting is more, as I would say, relationships before business, you know, building that foundation to build up on. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to go over to Jason. Go ahead, Jason. Well, I think I think we live in a world of metrics right now in comparison. So we seek external validation and attention to provide that temporary artificial happiness. So the way I look at it is networking is almost what's in it for me and connecting is what's in it for them or us. And and I I I'd even push it farther saying connecting is almost like hooking up and connection is hooking in. So I believe it's even connection is is the root of it. I love it. We're going to go over to Raquel. Go ahead Raquel. Um, I, I skip networking. I go in for the connection kill. And an example is Jason. So Jason and I already know each other. Jason, uh, one of our mutual connections, Chantel, had done a post about him to connect with him. And I DM'd him right away. And I think we started bantering back and forth with song lyrics. And that's how we connected. And automatically, we kind of developed this friendship because we had this interest in music. And here we are today as pretty good friends and have collaborated and done business together. So yeah, I just, I skipped the networking. <laughs> 
I build those relationships as, as fast as I can. Even with Adam, I was already setting him videos and he and I were videoing back and forth and talking about our personal lives. And so, yeah, I, I think sometimes you got to just skip that networking process. Yeah, and I, I'm going to dig into the video question. I'm going to let Natalie jump in here, but I'm going to come back to to both you and because we've talked about that on the show um, in terms of you know dropping uh, videos and messages versus just you know the normal uh, text back and forth. So I want to I want to dig a little bit deeper on that. But Natalie, jump in here. Look, networking is a necessary first step. Okay, it's not a dirty word. When you go to a grocery store, you're not putting everything into your cart to then buy and take home. Same thing with networking. You're going to a big Zoom meeting, there's 100 people. You're not gonna connect with each of them. So here's what I say very pragmatically. You're gonna rank these people, one to 10. 10 being best, oh my God, love them, BFF, I feel like I've known them forever. One, ice, Elsa. Elsa is calling and she wants her ice back, okay? Don't even waste your time on anyone who's not an eight, nine, or 10. You're not going to love them enough for them to be memorable. You're not going to want to send business. You're wasting your time. Put the things that you want into your cart, same as dating, right? You're on an app. You're looking for someone to date. You're not going to swipe right to everybody. You want people who you're going to connect with on some level. It has to be that initial, I love this person. I want to know more because only then can you actually want to contribute to their business. Think about them often and be able to bring value to them. Because I will tell you one thing, there's nothing that stops a connection more than when it's one-sided. Me, me, me all the time. Take, take, take. It's always about the giver's gain, my friends. Love it. We're going to go over to Steve. Yeah, yeah. So Natalie, I thought you great job, by the way. Fantastic. Everyone's answers are, are great. Uh, but Natalie, you were talking about the supermarket. And I thought you're going to go in a different direction because I've been known prior to the pandemic and actually, you know, mid pandemic to actually talk to strangers at the supermarket uh, as, as a way of initiating to networking to connect. Right. So uh, it, it's it's interesting. But um yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why I, I wanted to have the name Master Connector versus Master Networker was because it's all about connecting. So I just, uh, but great job, everyone. That 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 is absolutely one hundred percent right on point. Uh, I just wanted to throw a little humor here about the the whole supermarket thing. Love it. So let me let me just dig it before we jump into the next question, uh, Raquel and Adam, if you would, and and you know anybody else that wants to jump into it, uh, what's your experience with the video? What do you use? What are the tools that you're using, and and what's the difference and impact uh, for you guys? Um, so I do video and audio message because I think also if you're not if I'm not in the place, maybe I look like a mess and so I don't want to do a video, I'll do an audio message because you can really hear someone's inflection and their personality, I think, through their voice. So I try to do that. But otherwise, I, I try to do a video. I think it's just a great way to kind of show someone who you are. Because let's be honest, a lot of um, our pictures online tend to look a little bit different. <laughs> than what we actually look like. So I like to be that person of like, hey, this is me. And I just use my iPhone video. I don't use any special apps or anything. And I just go ahead and hit send. Adam, you want to jump in? Everyone's been bothering me to get, get rid of my Android so I can just get an iPhone and do FaceTime with them. Yeah, Natalie, uh, boss, mo money mama's shaking her head even at me. Um, <laughs> so I, so... First off, in regards to meetings, I mean, I'm using Zoom and Teams. I, I you know, I'm kind of, you know, I just wrote a blog on Zoom fatigue. You know, I'm just, just uh, not, not a big fan. Like, I'm, a, I'd rather do Zoom than phone calls sometimes. But if I already know the person, I'd rather just do a phone call. I'd rather go for a walk or be healthy, do my own thing. Um, people are a little uncomfortable with like what's different. Um, sending the video messages, like Jason sent one to me earlier, and it was wonderful. I felt his energy, his vibes, his passion. Like I genuinely felt like, you know what, Natalie, in the first 10 seconds of Jason's video, I loved him. He was a 10. He was a 10. Not just because we were on this, this podcast together, but I, I have a lot of energy and I want that energy to come out. So I do think that video allows it. But um, later on, I'll talk about wasabi. And I think that that'll uh, wake a lot of us up. <laughs> I was saying I'm, a, I'm an Android guy too, and Stephanie Bluff. I was saying they can they can download Duo, they can get on our train, right? Go ahead, Steve. I know you wanted to jump in. Yeah, no, I just wanted to give a shout out. I, you know, Natalie, uh, we had a little group, uh, LinkedIn message group going, 
And then Natalie came in with this video message and it just set the right tone. And it just, it, it made it very clear to me how important that can be. And I'm sure there's going to be times and places to do it, but it really, it really helps. So I, I, I need to step up my game. I need to do that more. And I also need to figure out, because I know that there's a little button to record in, in LinkedIn when you have your on the phone device, but I don't know how to do it. And I'm sure I could figure it out, but I don't know how to do the whole video. Part. I know how to do an iPhone video, obviously, uh, but I don't know how you import it into the, into the, uh, into the message. So if it's easy and it's not too technical, I'd love to know how you do it. Well, I can just tell you right away that on the app, there's a little microphone right where you would type in. There's a microphone, hit the microphone, start recording. LinkedIn gives you a max of one minute audio message. As far as video, I think it gives you a max of one minute, but I just go ahead and record it on my iPhone. And then it says, if you're uploading a picture, you, you opt for the video. Super simple. And Steve, actually, I think it was Raquel's beautiful video in our uh, in our chat. Who, who oh, did I see Natalie? I apologize, Raquel. My apologies. Thank you. No, yes, Raquel. no worries. I get it. We're both so fast, fabulously gorgeous, and amazing. It's easy to to, to mix up. But here's the deal. You know, it's funny. I'm going to take a contrary position. I actually think that you have to give the person who you're connecting with. It in the way that they want to be spoken to, okay? Like, I kind of get annoyed when I don't know a person, they're sending me an audio. I'm like, why? This is LinkedIn. You should be sending me a short message via like the in mail that really gets to the point. Yeah. If I'm on Clubhouse, of course I want the audio. If I'm on Zoom, I better see your face. Don't be blacking out the screen because that's how we're going to connect. But really, it's not the golden rule do us to others as you'd want done to yourself. It's the platinum. What would they want? And I think if you gauge that on a person, you're going to be much more successful because someone who might get annoyed by those things, which how would you know, right, before connecting? I also think, like, for example, the amount of connections that I'm sure comes to all of us every single day is so overwhelming. I can barely get through them. So it's almost like, okay, the text message might be the first, but then after I really like Raquel because we've had amazing banter where maybe then it's let's get on a Zoom and or let's trade videos, right? It's not like a one shot and, and dating. It's not like one shot, let's go home, right? You, you, it's the build up to that. And I think it's really important to understand how does the person want to be communicated with? Love it. And we got uh, folks chiming in in the chat, Joanna. Alaska says uh, catering, uh, the communication according to the person's preferred needs is key. I, you know, I, especially when we're talking about clients in particular, right? But uh, I think it's always good, right? You're going to get a lot further if you're talking to them on their wavelength. Um, who else wants to jump in? I know, Adam, you said you have a little trick everyone might appreciate. Yeah. So something that I do whenever I meet somebody for the first time, um, like, for example, when I met Steve for the first time, he said any type of communication is fine. He's on LinkedIn Messenger. You know, I could text him, call him. He kind of opened up the gate for me to understand how he prefers it. Um, Natalie, that was a phenomenal perspective that you just gave because, and I know that Joanna commented in it. Um, I, my, my energy, my personality, I can't ex expect that everyone is going to be okay like that just because I'm okay like that. So I'll find out like, hey, Natalie, um, you know, like, if I wanted to send you a video to hype you up or get you motivated or say hello to you, you know, one day randomly on LinkedIn, would that be okay? And like, I'll gauge how that might make her feel like, and it's hard to keep track of all of this. I, I use my CRM to do it, but, um, Adam, and I would answer, it depends on how much sleep I got for my two and a half year old. And you would probably say the same about your five month old. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I do, um, I have a list of, um, you know, a good, I, I keep track of a lot of, you know, things I do and I send, um, for a lot of my friends that don't like Monday Mondays, like I don't look forward to the weekend. I look forward to Mondays and like, that's, that can't be everybody. But what I'm getting at is for my friends that don't like Mondays and they know I don't mind them. I'll literally send them a video either on Facebook, on LinkedIn. I'll send, I'll, I'll even call them on a Monday, even if it's a 30 second phone call, just to get them hyped up. You know, I'll go out of my way to do that because it spreads good vibes. But you know, Natalie, like you said, it depends on how much sleep we might've gotten the night before. <laughs> Cam, can I get in on this? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I just, I want to read Joanna's thing because you can integrate this profile analyst at LinkedIn to gaze this. And I've, and I've heard this a lot, right? So love to kind of tackle this in the whole networking versus connecting, uh, this profile. Uh, it seems kind of complicated. And for 
even folks that have a good understanding, how do you apply it to scale, right? So you're building a large network. How do you sort of figure that out? Uh, if you aren't connecting, I, I don't know if there is a, is a way. You know, I, I think it's a hugely impactful thing. I'm a very high I, second is D. I don't think to anyone's uh, shock, but here's the deal, right? To what Adam was saying, and I think it's profound. It is even in doing business, right? So beyond the initial connection, there was a guy who I really liked and I want to send him business. But every time I send him business, he wants to have an hour long referral conversation. And I just don't have the time for that. It's a 10 second email, right? So I think like, really, people might want to give you business, they want might want to be on that level with you. But if you are so stuck, and this is how I do things, it might not work for them. And then you could be losing out on thousands upon thousands of dollars. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I've definitely walked away from the table when somebody wasn't communicating with me the way that I per personally enjoyed. Steve, I know you wanted to jump in. Yeah, I love the disc personality uh, profile uh, as well. And, and you know, I, I think every time I challenge people and ask them what, what they think I am, they're always wrong. So it's interesting. So, um, but there's a you know so so D dominant decisive I inspiring center of attention life of the party S supportive uh, kind of like people pleaser and C cautious calculating right that's what it is for those who don't know what it is and and the D and the I uh, tend to be very fast paced and the S and the C are slow paced and then the the D and the C are task driven and the S and the um, uh, S and I are people driven okay. And so, you know, when you ask somebody, hey, uh, are you, when you first thing in the morning, when you wake up uh, on a Saturday, what do you want to do? You think about who you want to see or, or, or what do you got to do? They're task driven. And based upon, you know, you, you can even tell or you can ask them, are you fast or slow paced? And if they, if they say, I'd rather do, I'd rather do something on a, on a Saturday and they're slow paced, chances are they're dominant C. So why, why that's effective is, is because you could kind of live in their, in their quadrant, right? If they're, if they're slow paced, if they're C, then, you know, you, you have the ability to kind of speak their language because to Adam's point and everyone, everyone said some piece of this, right? You want to speak to people in what's comfortable for them. I, I think uh, Natalie also touched on it, right? Is you want to speak uh, their language. So um, yeah. So basically, uh, that that's that's really how. So in I don't know if you could do it up front. I think it's hard to look at somebody's profile and know if they're D or I or S or C. But when you're communicating with them, you could definitely figure out what they are pretty quickly, and then you could kind of communicate based upon that uh, you know type of uh, level. Um, can I interject really quickly? So I have found because I obviously am very high energy, and I'll do the video and I'll do the audio. And sometimes what I find is people that are the opposite of me, they actually appreciate that because they themselves are not that way. So it's almost like I'm inspiring them in some capacity or I'm making them smile and laugh when they're really not used to that because they might be used to people communicating with them at that level. So sometimes when they get someone like me that's kind of just out of the blue, um, they appreciate that. And, and so I find that sometimes it's okay if you're the opposite. <laughs> I agree with that, Raquel. I am. I am absolutely. Uh, you know that energy I play off of. But in the business world, sometimes when you're doing business and you're trying to do a serious transaction, sometimes there's that side where you you kind of want somebody who's serious if you're really a high C, right? But I but I agree. I, I I'm I tend to be. Believe it or not, I'm a I'm a C D D C. And you know some yeah. Most people don't believe that, but that's true. But I agree. I like when there's somebody who's that I occasionally because it kind of brings life to a kind of a pretty straightforward kind of gray kind of world that that D's and C's tend to live in, you know? I love it. And we got, we got some great comments from our audience. I think this is Nina. If you can give uh, permission so we can see your face, a very successful compass real estate agent I met recently says we need to be elegantly aggressive. I love that. Uh, elegantly aggressive, which I think is a good uh, transition into our next question here. Uh, specifically, what things do you do to make sure you're connecting and not just adding to your network, right? Uh, and then that'll lead into the question, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put it out there and I'm definitely looking for questions from the audience in terms of how you're uh, bringing in uh, people into your network. Are you concerned that if your network gets too big, 
you won't be able to really connect, build and maintain relationships. And then we'll, we'll get into the why of that, but specifically what things do you do to make sure you're connecting and not just adding to your network? So who wants to jump in on this first? Steve, you want to start us off? Yeah, I can start it, but I want to hear uh, Adam's been teasing us with sushi with, with, uh, with wasabi <laughs> backstage. So I'm, I'm a huge sushi guy. So I need to hear what he has to say about wasabi. So Adam, let, tell us about wasabi first before I have to say what I have to say. All right. So I'm going to answer Cameron's question while talking about Steve's question. So one of, one of my best friends, actually, he's my business partner in a new business that I'm launching. Uh, his name is Greg Pajak. And when Greg first met me, he told me that I am a cake of wasabi. What he meant by that is my personality is just overkill of wasabi, that if you put too much wasabi on a piece of sushi, it just it's going to kill the flavor. So going back to the disc conversation about our personality types and how we connect and, you know, if we have too much energy, is it going to turn them off or is it going to push them away? So I always, you know, you can't be everything to everyone. You can be the right thing to the right people. And those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. But the wasabi comment that I made is in regards to, you know, the perfect amount of wasabi or the right amount of wasabi tailored to that piece of sushi that you're about to eat can really make or break the flavor. Sometimes you don't have any wasabi and then it's like a dud. Other times you have too much wasabi and you're like, wow, I need, I need, a, I need to take a nap after this connection I just made. Um, so that's the wasabi thing. You have to tailor your wasabi level to the other person's liking. And the only way that you do that is by kind of getting to know them genuinely. And then to your question that you just had, Cameron, what I would say is I, I have so many people that want to meet me. I have so many people that are introduced to me. Um, my ask when I'm when I'm networking, when I'm talking to my business professional, you know, friend network, you know, they say, Adam, how can I help you? And I say, I want to talk to whoever you love doing business with. If you enjoy doing business with them, odds are I'm going to enjoy doing business with them and I would love to meet them and I'll connect with them. But if there's nothing there, very similar to what Natalie said before, I'm willing to give it a second and a third date, you know, so, so say to give it a try. But if people don't follow up with me, if people don't put the effort in, I lose the effort as well. We lost Cameron, so I'll just uh, start talking. No, uh, yeah. I, was, I, was, I, I thought you were going to jump in. And then I know uh, Natalie and Raquel wanted to jump in as well. Yeah. So so uh, great analogy, Adam, with the wasabi. And I totally get what you're saying for sure. Um, it's uh, uh, I, I agree. I'm actually a kind of a put a little wasabi in the soy sauce guy, mix it up, stir it up. And then I'll add a little, I'll actually take the sushi and take a little dab of wasabi for a little extra on the end. So that's kind of my my sushi uh, methodology. Steve, but Steve, you're like my husband, hysterical. <laughs> it is, it is. But uh, anyway, um, we did have a question. I, I'll kind of um, talk a little bit about this. So Joanna asked, uh, how do you transition from personal business convo, right? Um, honestly, I, I start the conversation you know, on the personal side, I, I say, hey, you know, and I think Adam and I, when we connected, you know, he, he commented, I think, on I love what you just said, because I set the tone to the conversation when there's kind of a after we go, you know, how's your day? How's it going? And it kind of winds down, you know, uh, and even if somebody breaks in with. So tell me about what you do. I usually say, can I ask it? Can, I, can we just take this in a different conversation? I'd love to hear your story, your journey, not just what you do, but the born and raised part, the whole nine yard. And then we can kind of talk about what we do in that. But and then we go from there and and people seem to love it. And then if they want, I'll, 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 I'm happy to start with. So at least they and I start with my weaknesses. I start with my personal side. And, and to me, it's all about personal and business kind of comes after versus trying to do business. And then, you know, it's like, okay, let's let's be honest. Right. It's a cliche. But we know that people do business with people they know, like a trust. Well, how, if you're just talking about what you do, how do you develop any of that, right? So let the, let the two, the inner kids, if you will, start to mingle a little bit. And then, you, you know, the adults can start to do business, right? So that's my mentality, my philosophy. Cameron's backstage, so I'll, uh, whoever wants to go next, just speak up. I'm going to go in. So look, here's yeah. the deal, right? There is no difference between personal and business. None. People do business with people that they like. Flat out, period, the end. So if if you're like, I'm so scared to show myself and what is my boss going to think? And maybe you're like, you know, not right. I mean, people have to take a self audit 
right? Like what really gets you going? For me, it's all about the people. I love the people. My business benefits as a result, but it's not like, hey, are you thinking of death and dying? Want to get your will done? Who would ever do their will with me? But the fact is like, we can talk, we're friends. We talk about our kids. We talk about our life. And as a result, oh yeah, you do wills and trusts. I might as well use you. I know you're a good person. I know I can trust you. Of course. It always starts with the people. It's heart to heart connections. Raquel, I know you wanted to jump in. And I, I just want to shout out Chris Januski in the office. That was the Steve. That was the way Steve started our first conversation, started on the personal level. It was a different approach for me, but I genuinely appreciated that he wanted to know me. Uh, go ahead, Raquel. Well, I agree with Natalie. Um, you have to connect with people emotionally and people that like you are going to want to do business with you. And the only way to do that is to show who you are. So for me with personal branding, that's people approach me to want to do business with me, not because I'm telling them what I do. It's because they see who I am on social media and they feel like they already know me. And so when they come at me and say, hey, I'd love to work with you, I, it's already sold because they feel like they already know me so well. So I really don't have to sell myself. And uh, so that's why for me, like I never talk business. It, it That it's just not me. I'm just not a salesy person. It's kind of a weakness of mine that I'm not, I should be a little bit more aggressive. So, but yeah, so I just always start out personal. So I agree with Natalie on that one. All right. And I know Adam wants to jump in. So you have a conundrum for us, Adam. Is that right? So time is money. Time is the most valuable currency. We spend all this time getting to know people, follow up conversations, secondary, third, fourth conversations, half an hour here, 10 minutes here, text message here. From the revenue generating standpoint, and this is a, a pain point that I found in, in my business and in, in my clients' businesses, you're investing time. It's an investment. There's an ROI, is an expectation of it. All these connections that we have, whether it's hundreds or thousands or even just 10, if it's not creating revenue, if it's not creating it, you know, to the bottom line, what is the benefit that it's doing? And that that's that's a question I get all the time asked to me. And I'm not saying those people get it or don't get it, but it's a very difficult conversation to have with someone that doesn't get it because the time you invest in a relationship, it might not create revenue today, but it's like when is the best time to plant a tree? Twenty years ago, so you have shade today. You know, today. When is the next best time to plant a tree? Today, so you'll hopefully have a shade in twenty years. But um, that's a conundrum that a lot of people question me about. And your question, Cameron, was how do you stay in touch with all these connections? It takes a lot of effort and a lot of time. Adam, to your point, look, it's not an overnight process, okay? It's not like, hey, I took you out for coffee, so you now owe me your business. <laughs> Wake up, right? That's never going to work. The fact is that it's the long game. And, it, and, okay, there's a lot of lurkers on LinkedIn who are seeing your stuff, sending you messages privately, but not commenting and not adding. But that person could lead you to your biggest connection ever. And I will also say, stop thinking of yourself as little old me. I'm not getting something today. Wah. No, I am the enterprise. This is you, Inc. So the amount of followers you have, you know what that's going to do? Get your next book deal. Get your next influential opportunity at a company who wants to access your network. It's so much more than tit for tat. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. This is a whole new world, people. And it is the expansive, abundant, how can I bring value? And it will always come back 10x, uh, an O to Grant Cardone. Thank you very much. I love it. I want to just remind you, we were halfway through the program, loving all the comments from people. Keep asking questions. We want to hear you. Uh, we want to see your comments. We want you to like, we want you to share. Keep shouting out where you're coming in for the new viewers that are coming in. We want your questions, your comments it really helps us. Steve, go ahead. All right. I want to hear from Jason. So, uh, but, I, but I'll definitely, I'll definitely say something since you passed it to me, Jason, you're next. All right, sir. Um, but uh, hopefully I'm not putting you on the spot. I am though. Um, but, but yeah, absolutely. Natalie, you nailed it. Right. So it's a hundred percent agree with you, right? It's the law of reciprocity. It's the, the law of sowing and reaping. It's, it's, you know, it's karma. It's, you know, you're just giving good, you give good, you get good, right? It's, it's never about what, what can you give me? And yes, it's a, it's cliche. So let's, there's a great book. You guys know I talk about it, the go giver, right? So, we, you know, we won't talk about the, the givers, whatever, right? Cause I understand, uh, where, where that comes from, but, but still, 
go the go giver get you give and then you get right and, and you're, you're sowing and I, I think uh it was either adam i think adam said it right you plant a harvest and and then you know you plant a tree right and 20 years later you get the you get the apples coming from it right you plant a you plant a harvest out of you know farm or whatever you're going to get the crop you know six eight months later right so it's just it's just sowing good seed and and by the way when you do it you the best blessing to me is when i sow good seed is I feel really good about me. And that is worth everything to me, right? You know, is what I'm giving, when I'm get, when I'm taking and when I'm thinking of me and I'm self-focused, it might feel okay, but I, it's like eating chunky, chunky monkey ice cream. You know, you feel really good and I'll sit and eat a whole pint of it. I, actually, that's not my flavor, I like butter pecan. But I'll sit in front of the TV and watch it and eat, and eat the whole pint. And it's so good for like that moment, but then I feel horrible right after, right? So. Be, be a giver. You feel good long term. I think Jason uh, Stephen wanted you to jump in. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of an, the 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 odd one here because I live in a world of connection. I don't care about connections. I care about connection. Very very different from that one letter. Mm -hmm. And Adam, when you're talking about time and time is money, I I don't live in time. Time is like fake to me because I can manipulate time. I live in energy. So I'm like a weird kind of breed because like Raquel is a prime example, but everybody I meet, we dive right into, to real conversation and, and I don't live in a business world. I live in kind of this deep heart world of, of very vulnerable, intimate conversations. So when, when you have a conversation with me, it's very different from what everybody else is talking about. Um, my, I don't have metrics. I don't have comparisons. And so it puts me in a different place and, and going back to where we, this whole thing started with, with setting videos and everything. I think we're thinking, well, what's in it for me, but it's actually for me, when I send a video and I send a video, a thank you video to every single connection that I have on LinkedIn. And all it is, is it's literally a personal thank you to them. It's a gratitude to them. There's nothing in it for me. I just want to thank them for the connection. And that's kind of where it starts. So it's, we're talking also about what are they looking for in terms of, are we trying to connect through audio, through video? I don't care about that stuff. I, 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 I'm connecting on, on a very energetic level. I'm just thanking them. That's all I'm doing. I don't need anything out of it. So this conversation is very interesting for me of hearing from all the different perspectives because we're coming from such different places. But at the end of the day, we are all talking about something very deep as connection which again to me it's always the root of it all but i i love i love hearing all the different places because these are places where i don't live in but i really respect kind of understanding from, from each of you so it's very interesting for me jason i know other people want to uh, jump into the conversation but i think one of the things that's interesting about your platform and sort of the take in general is that there is this uh duality challenge between we don't necessarily want to be about the numbers, but people go where the numbers are, right? Natalie's definitely uh, speaking to that. Uh, and we got folks that are very much like, you know, great point, Natalie. It's a brand new world. Our old attitudes on networking will not be helpful. Uh, you know, f folks big up. And, I, and I, I think, you know, I'm generally, I'm generally of that crowd that are like, you know, I don't want the pitch and I don't want to pitch and very much in, in Raquel's boat. Like I'm not, I don't feel like a salesman and somehow things generally work out, but as you're trying to scale and build, it's, it's, there is that, that, that battle between the two. And at the end of the day, if you're not, if there's not an audience already there, will more people follow? Uh, I know that's got to be a big challenge on the social network side for you is like, you know, okay, what are people looking for? I'm looking for connection, but if there aren't people here, right? So how do you 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 get the numbers as well as uh, have the the soft, <laughs> you know, very connection based environment? I don't know if you want to respond right back to that, Jason, or we can keep going around here. People respond at whatever frequency you're vibrating at. So whatever you, wherever you are. I don't care about being accepted by everybody. I've accepted myself in this life. So I'm going to find the people who I, I will mm. be with. I'll surround myself with my community. I'm not for everybody. I'm okay with that. Not everybody's with me and that's okay. 
Um, but at the end of the day, we're talking, we have 7.5 billion people. There's enough to go around. I think that's a thing that we all forget about. We get so lost in our little tunnel vision of abundance, 10,000, a hundred thousand followers in this little box, but we're, we're surrounded by like 7.5 million people, billion people. I'm sorry. There's a, there's plenty to go around. So I think we get caught in our little bubble at times, but, but there's plenty abundance. Yes. Yeah, I, I love the the abundance mindset and that you can be you, you can be introspective, you can be in your hidey hole, not want to jump in the video, follow some of our advice that we even talk a lot about on the show about being more out there. I, I truly believe um, you, you don't get necessarily more by being shy, but at the same note, there are ways to be shy and still put yourself out there. Um, and I and I really appreciate that, Jason. It's, it's just finding that way. Right. Well, you're saying shy. I don't, I don't see anything with being shy. I think. Well, that's... yeah. I mean, sh I mean, shy in the sense that maybe I don't want to show out the same way that Raquel shows out, or maybe I don't want to show out the same way that I want to do it in my own way. And I, I think that's what you were speaking to is that you're kind of on a different wavelength. You got your vibration and you're going to vibe with folks that, that are, are I, on your. The beautiful thing about this is individuality. I don't judge yeah. anybody and I love how everybody does it their way. And I, and I, and I, more than anything, I wish that everybody can just step into their own and do it their way. At the end of the day, that's, that's, that does it for me. You know, I'll just shout out Joanna. Oh my God, please, please, please. No more pitches. Those are the worst. All right. Uh, go ahead, Natalie. I know you wanted to jump into the conversation. To Joanna's point, I wrote a post about this the other day. I said, stop word vomiting on me. I mean, literally, if you get into my inbox and you have more to say to me than my sister and my mother have to say to me, and you've never met me. You clearly don't care about who's on the other side. And how is that going to impact your business in a good way? It's just not. So like, sure, is that the most expedient way? Copy, paste, copy, paste. In turn, do this. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Yeah, but what the heck are you wasting your time for unless it's actually going to lead to real connection? Now, to, J to Jason's point, I want to go back. And, you know, I think I love what he said about showing up as you are and not having to prove to anyone. And for me, it's been an amazing journey because the numbers, who cares? Great, oh yeah, I have all these many followers, look at me, blah, blah, blah. To me, it's about impact. How can I make that impact to be able to affect a life? So for example, when my first book was written, The Millennial's Guide to the Universe, I went on college campuses and I spoke to them for an hour for free about the reality of the world and how they don't have to take on all this debt and how they should plan for the end and work back on what kind of life they want to create for themselves. And do you know that the kids came up to me at the end of that session and said, this was the best hour of my entire college career because I now know what I want to do with my life. That's what it's all about. I mean, the vanity BS, who cares? They don't pay for my mortgage. They don't take care of my kids' childcare. They do nothing. It's about how can I have impact in this world and spread the message that I am specifically here to spread and each of us have our own journey. Natalie, I love that. I would say, you know, it comes down to connect to life, not likes, because you, you can't cash in likes at the end of this journey. So by the end, when she said impact, I, I got chills when Natalie just said that. I love that. And I, Adam, I know you wanted to jump in with a joke around elevator pitches. And I just wanted to shout out Braden Daniels, who uh, in the chat said, I think there's been a trend of obsessing on the elevator pitch. Thanks, Shark Tank. There's a value in being able to communicate what you do in one sentence and moving on. And uh, while, while I got uh, the screen here, please, uh, Julian Sato saying, please state again that, that the message pitched by way of LinkedIn and the false interest in me, my so-called need for more clients is the worst way to connect. I appreciate Jason and Raquel because they are so genuine and it shows because intent is felt, not heard. Love it. Love it. He's my mentor, by the way. Hi, Julian. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Adam. You had, you had something to say about the elevator pitch. Julian, if you don't mind connecting with me, I'd love to connect with you. That's cool. Um, it seems like Raquel approves of it. Um, so in the new business that my partner Greg and I are launching uh, called Huga, um, we actually have, um, we, we, in our legal language, we have something called a 1432. So a 1432 stands for no commission breath. Um, 14 for the, the letter N, uh, three for the letter C, and then two, uh, B for the letter number two. Uh, so a 1432 is 
you basically violated um, our organization by pitching. And uh, we actually have something, you know, where no elevator pitches because it's healthier to take the stairs. So at the end of the day, uh, I just put a post up on LinkedIn recently about how the days of elevator pitches are coming to an end. And people don't realize that even when they're not trying to do an elevator pitch, they're still doing an elevator pitch. The authentic and genuine way that you come off and your energy is what's going to make the difference. So I think that a lot of people are trying not to be on stage with an elevator pitch, but they're still going to be on stage. It's just a different type of stage. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm try, I, I lost track of who wanted to jump in. I ended up in there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Cameron, yeah. So, that, I mean, this 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 conversation is, is going way better than I ever expected it was to go. And I appreciate all, all the feedback and, and all the perspectives. That, and, yeah, it's great. And I know we were talking about um, purpose and impact. And, and I can so – I know Cameron probably as well. But we both can really relate to that because that's what it's all about. It really is. It's about – impacting who how many people how many lives can you touch how many how many people can you impact to me that's really what it's all about and uh and the only reason for me to grow a network is to get more to reach more people so i could really impact them not not for another having more numbers not for an ego thing it's really not about that um but there was a question which i don't know if i ever got answered which is <clears throat> how do you stay in touch with people in your network so i'm going to take that approach real quick here sort of shift gears a little bit and I think LinkedIn has is, has some great tools, right? So one of the things that I do is, you know, the, when they there's the happy work anniversary button, I, I push it. And if I get a response back, I respond with, hey, you're welcome. Uh, you know, hey, let's catch up, right? To me, that's it's a work anniversary. That's going to pretty much come up every year. So it's a, one, it's a way that I can stay in touch with somebody once a year, at least, right? Uh, job change, promotion, you know, those, those messages. I use them, okay? When people comment or like something that I'm doing, I can actually engage with them. I can actually, hey, thanks for liking me. I actually go to the to the area where the people view you, uh, view your profile, and I actually send a message. I actually started doing it recently. I'm like, I forget what I wrote, but something to the effect of, hey, you know, I, I, not I got notified that you you, um, you you viewed my profile recently. Uh, you know, I'm all about adding value and being the light. Uh, you know, how can I help you? Is there anything I could do to help you and bring value or something to that effect? So it's just a way for us to kind of continue to stay in touch. If you're, if you're never on LinkedIn, you know, then yeah, don't bother with any of this. But if you're on LinkedIn and you're going to leverage it, you can use the tools and stay in touch with everybody. So no matter how big your network is, you could really stay in touch with them all. You really can. And then, of course, not to mention posting and videos and those kinds of things. You know, especially if you're doing lifestyle oriented stuff like most of us are, people are getting to know us a, you know, a little bit about us as well. So that's all I wanted to share. I wanted to kind of make sure that that question was um, was answered. Awesome. I think you did a great job of that. I mean, I, I, I've been following your lead and I, we started this back in November and uh, I was about, at about 2,500 connections on LinkedIn and now I'm approaching about 4,000 since we started doing this program. And a lot of that is from the learning and uh, things like I was like never wanting to send a connection without sending a note attached. And I got over that because people were sort of giving me permission to go ahead and hit that button. And then, you know, same kind of thing. People respond once they do. Then I'm reaching out with the message to create the connection, get it in the calendar. Uh, you can you can you can do these things at scale. I love what Gary B is, you know being a business person, you know, you get to start making or money or start providing value when you start scaling the unscalable. So those hard things, those challenges, if you can figure a way to figure that out, uh, because we all know it's a lot of work and, and it can seem overwhelming, but if you can scale it, if you can figure out a way to do it. And, uh, I think that's the value of, I've, I, I don't know about everybody watching, but I've definitely learned and, uh, gotten so much value, uh, from this program and it's, and it's allowed me to network with more people. All right. So Raquel, I know you want to jump in, go ahead. Um, I wanted to jump in just because I get comments a lot about, wow, you have almost 23,000 connections. Like, that's amazing. And I just laugh because I could have double that if I accepted every connection request, but I don't because I'm really about quality over quantity. And I've been on the platform for eight years. So that's actually a steady growth over an eight year period, if you think about it. And so what happens is the way I stay in touch with my connections is when I post, 
I have such an incredible community and network that I get a lot of engagement and I just make sure that I respond to those comments. And, you know, a lot of times we'll go back and forth in there. And so I'm really blessed to where when, when I have an engagement, it's, it's different people. It's not the same folks. Like I really get um, just a ton of all my connections saying something insightful. And so I love that. So I really take great pride in that I've built a really strong and, and community that I trust. And, and so I think that that's really important too, for folks to know that it, you can do that in your engagement. You don't necessarily have to constantly DM your connections. But yeah, I mean, you have the anniversaries. Sometimes I'll see the birthdays. And if it's someone that I feel comfortable enough, I'll go ahead and send them a hap I'll sing them happy birthday in an audio message. I'll do that sometimes as well. But yeah, it's definitely an effort. It's it's <laughs> It takes time and energy. But the benefit is you get all these people that are that you feel you have a connection with. Love it. Natalie, I know you wanted to jump in. Go ahead, Natalie. It's all about the ongoing. Look, LinkedIn is a place that it starts. It does not end there. Okay. Anyone like, think about it. You become friends with the person you meet in the cocktail party. Well, in a pre COVID world, right. And God willing in a post COVID world soon. If you just wait till the next time you haphazardly might find this person, good luck. You're going to get their number. You're going to follow up. You're going to say, let's get coffee. At that coffee, if you have another great time, let's do a dinner together. Let's bring our husbands next time, or let's bring our significant others or spouses, whatever. Okay, this is the natural way things progress. So if you think it's just going to be on LinkedIn, wake up. It's about taking that initial LinkedIn spark and building on that. And look, here's the thing. A lot of people on this call are, are not for a particular networking organization. However, that networking organization is where I kind of learned my networking chops years back. And what I think they did very well was it was a weekly meeting. People are always thinking about themselves. So you think like, oh my God, of course I said that I do this. And how does Adam not know? Well, because he, Adam has to hear it eight times and maybe more in today's social media world to even begin to resonate with what I'm doing. So it's not just about one and done, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's about consistent, daily, and then building on that relationship. It is a relationship. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so uh, Adam, I know you wanted to jump in, and then uh, I think, all right, I'm not clear on the private chat. I'm confused. Adam, go ahead. <laughs> Natalie, one more time. Can you just say the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am? <laughs> The first one is free. The second one comes with the cost, Adam. <laughs> what was the comparison before, Steve? I'm just sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> so this is uh, when I first started my consulting firm, I would compare business development and building relationships very similar to dating. And, you know, I can, I, I'm sure all of us were different daters. Some of us might have met our spouses at a young age. Some of us might have not met our spouses yet. Um, I personally met my wife online, you know, eight years ago. But if you think of, if you treat business like dating, and I don't mean this in a in a inappropriate sense, but you, you're not going to just jump right out to say to someone, hey, can we go back to your place? You're not going to say to someone in networking, hey, you know, where's my business or whatever the case is. You really need to treat it like dating in that regards, and you want to be respectful. You know, I was a gentleman. I would I would open the door. My um, the girls I used to date, their parents thought that I was like faking it because I would open the door, I'd hold the door, or do something, and it's like, no, this is how I choose to handle a date. So we all have our own style. Um, someone said before being um, something about being aggressive. Uh, well, I, I, who said that before? What aggressively was it? elegant. Yes, aggressively elegant. So I mean. How do you choose to handle a date? You might meet someone, you're like, oh my God, I have to, this person, I need to build a relationship with them. But you're going to tailor that to every person differently and you need to get to know them genuinely in order to do that. So Jason, I'm really excited to talk to you, man. I think that you and I are going to have a lot of differences, but a lot of similarities. Jason, I know you wanted to jump in and I'll just, just chime in on that aggressive, right? That elegantly aggressive there, there's, it's an abundant world, right? Jason was talking about that before. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of opportunity and people are distracted by you making sure to get your, your time in, your message in, reminding, 
you're helping people. And don't ever forget that, right? You have a valuable service. You're awesome. When you come into the table, you get into the chat box. Somebody will let you know if they're not interested. If they're not saying no, that means they just haven't gotten to it yet. So uh, keep going, keep asking, uh, keep, keep flourishing. Go ahead, Jason. Relationships are not built on convenience. Relationships are built on connection. He just dropped the mic. That was it. Boom. All right. <laughs> Jason, 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 man, a, a few words. So, all right. I'm going to check the, the, the private chat, but anyone. I, I can go. I can go. go. I, was, uh, I think I was going to go. Yeah. Uh, that great mic trap uh, job, Jason. That was great. Um, so, so I, I love what Natalie said about, um, about connecting and, and kind of the idea of, of you know staying in touch with people and and that that whole process right I, I look at, at networking very similar and a, a lot of us were talking about that as well um, but uh, what I what I wanted to mention is is it's interesting right and you know my strategy if you want to say that is after I connect with somebody I mentioned it I want to I want to you know jump on a phone call and I think it's funny how how some people not many but some come at me with no thanks you know. And I, I just I wonder and, and I'm very, I'm very tempted sometimes to just unconnect with them because I'm like, well, then why are you connecting with me? Right. It's like so. Uh, but I don't do that. And I'm, I'm very pleasant. I'm very, you know, I'm very nice. I don't uh, I don't rip them a new one, if you know what I mean. But I would like to in a way because I'm like, wake up. Right. If you want to connect, let's connect. Let's really connect. Let's not just, you know, but anyway. Um, so it's it's just interesting how how uh, you know the the networking thing has uh, the state of networking is what I is what I should say and and I think again it, it, I was I think I was speaking about this back you know before we uh, before we launched on uh, live uh, I think younger people I won't label them but younger people they they like hiding behind text behind messaging behind and they don't like to connect and and I'm just I'm just gonna say this straight. If you're young and you're uncomfortable, wake up. You need to wake up. You know, you need to, you know, get break that uncomfortability. You you need to be able to connect with people. If you're if you're maybe in college and you're listening to this or watching this, um, you know, maybe yeah, that was your comfort zone. Maybe that worked when you were in college. Maybe that worked when you're high school or elementary school. But it's not going to work in the business world. If you really want to, you know, I mean, if you're in any kind of business development role or if you're in the business world, try saying to your boss. Uh, yeah, I don't want to come in and speak to you. Can I just text you? I mean, it doesn't work, right? So you got to, you got to really. Uh, people are definitely experiencing that every day right now. Crazy. Crazy. Here's yeah. the deal, though. Okay. Hold on, man. The author of the Millennials Guide to the Universe, right? And I think one of the uh, youngest people on on this panel right now. Maybe it's just a different way of them communicating. Because we have to know where people are, right? And the truth is, is the guy who never wants to be on video and call, but is a crypto billionaire, who's better off? Like, really, is it the way we've always kind of done it and traditional networking the way we know it now? Or is it like sitting in your in your dungeon and creating, you know, video games and or crypto? I mean, I don't know. But the fact is, I think there has to be a bridge that we build between what Steve is saying, like, look, you need to be able to connect, which I clearly ascribe to and I love, and I love the connection of people. But some people might not feel comfortable with that, but they might, like, look, they shouldn't be in a business development role, clearly. You gotta take a position that's right for your skill set. but they could also be the billionaire we end up being the advisor to, right? They could be like our client. So I just don't know, I think that, um, Again, we have to meet people where they are. Yeah, we got we got to wrap up. And I was just trying to chime in here. I think this is a great way. So what do you suggest to the viewers to connect better with the people in their network? We're going to go around here uh, and everybody leave off their, their closing statement. Uh, I think, you know, definitely what I was referring to is the 30-year-old that's in my office that is definitely not a crypto millionaire <laughs> that... You know, is responsible for picking up the phone to get something done, but they will do everything in the world except pick up the phone because they are so not comfortable with that. And that's something where, you know, if you're not a millionaire and you're not making it happen and you're working for somebody, you better be able to pick up that phone for me or else we're going to have an issue. Right. Uh, but we're going to go around. Uh, who, who has to leave right at uh, three? 
Is there anybody that needs to go right at three? All right, so I think we're good. Uh, so we'll go Ra Raquel and then Adam and then Jason and then Natalie. Raquel, uh, what I'd like you to do is answer this question uh, for everybody and, and you can leave your, your golden nuggets here for, for the end here. What do you suggest to the viewers to connect better with the people in their network? And then how should people connect with you? Uh, how to better connect with people in their network. I just like everybody was saying, I think also what's comfortable for you, right? So like Natalie said, meet them where they are, but also you have to be comfortable with the way you do things. Um, and so I just kind of, I just follow my heart and my intuition nowadays being, I'm going to be 46. I'm kind of like in a different phase of my life where I don't really care what people think. I just want to do what's right and be a good person. So that's kind of like what leads me nowadays. Um, and as far as connecting with me, I'm on LinkedIn. I deleted my Facebook account. Sorry, Facebook um, and Instagram. And then I have my YouTube channel, Rock the Boat, R-E-Q, the boat over on YouTube. Love it. And we're going to go over to Adam and I'm just going to shout out to um, uh, Jeff. I hope I'm saying this right, Jeff Hawk. Very true. My 15 year old knows more about Bitcoin than most adults. Very cool. Uh, Adam, go ahead. Jeff, thanks for being here and uh, supporting the podcast, man. Um, can you repeat the question, Cameron, just the first part? Sure, absolutely. So, what do you suggest to the viewers to connect better with the people in their network? Uh, any golden nuggets that you would love to drop for folks as we're we're exiting out here? And uh, how how can people get in touch with you? Who who do you want to get in connection with you? I'm going to keep this really simple. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Best way to connect with me, uh, LinkedIn, please. And thank you. And uh, great being here today. Thank you, Adam. Jason, you're up. Just get to know everybody. Reach out. Have a real conversation offline. I'm surrounded by the most amazing humans in the world. And I've met them all through LinkedIn. So just get to know them. And the best way to get to know me is through xxoconnect.com. Awesome. And then again, the question is, what do you suggest to the viewers to connect better with people in their network? Go ahead, Natalie. Meet people where they are. Remember the platinum rule. Do on to others as they want done unto them. And remember, each of us in our own human experience is perfect. It's only in the engagement with others that we learn the lessons and do the things. So have those heart to heart connections because it doesn't matter how much money or whatever. At the end of the day, it's all about who is that circle? Five most important words in the human language, surround yourself with good people. Love that. I try to do that. We certainly do this uh, courtesy of the Master Connector. And with that said, Steve Spiro, Master Connector himself, close us out here. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Everyone did a fantastic job. A lot of great nuggets. Hopefully everyone else. Uh, I know if, if nobody else on who's watching this got this, as much value, I, I got tremendous value from being on with you folks. Incredible. I think the best the best show episode ever so far, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so what what can I do? What can I suggest? I would suggest lead with your heart, lead lead and with your heart, be yourself and just give. Just look to give. Who be a go be a go giver, right? And if you do that, you could never do wrong. Uh, and and as you know, I mean, I, I speak about it every time. It's our responsibility to be the light, right? And, you know, we there's a hurting world out there, and I think we're starting. to get out of the dark place that we were, but there's always a lot of people out there. You know, I've, you know, just heard uh, my, my, my friend, Alan, who, who just lost his mom. And, you know, we, we all have, you know, some stuff that we're dealing with. And so, you know, one call, one message, one inspirational thought can really affect the life. And, and, you know, what's that one life worth, right? So be the light. Uh, we need to inspire the world, right? There's enough negative. There's enough news There's always negative, but, we could be the light and we could change that. And I believe if we just touch one life and that ripple effect, what would that be like? So appreciate everybody. Love you all. Uh, I, know I got, I got one, I got one more question. Guys, but I love you anyway. I got and, one more uh, question to slip in. Brad Brad slipped us a, a late question here. What happens when you have connections and they don't engage? Uh, so Steve, if you could just answer that for us and then we'll count down five, four, three, two, one, crush it. And we'll close out the program. When they don't engage, I, I, I probably would just let it go. And and then, you know, you could always reconnect, you know, the happy anniversary or the happy birthday and 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 or or the happy job change, whatever. So that's it. And I'll, and I'll say this. I had somebody that I was like, I want them on BizDev Live. Uh, they weren't a famous superstar. They weren't somebody that or at least, you know, not that I know of. Um, they weren't, you know, somebody amazing in the moon. But as much as I reached out, there wasn't 
uh, a response. I reached out a couple of times and then you give up the ghost, right? You move on their loss, right? You know, I was trying to offer something cool. Uh, so I, I think you got to take that great advice, Steve. All right. Uh, we're going to say uh, together, uh, we're going to count down. Steve is going to lead this and we'll say crush it at the same time. Go ahead, Steve. I hope I get this right. Five, <laughs> four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. Crush it. Crush it. Thanks everybody for being on the program. We're going to play out the video. Everybody that was on here, we love your comments. Keep the questions coming. I know people will participate. We will see you next week. Uh, we'll be very excited. Uh, Steve, what's the, the uh, topic next week? It's a really good one. It's on uh, uncovering the cure for imposter, imposter syndrome. It's going to be a really, really good topic. So we will see you next week, LinkedIn. Thank you so much. I know the comments are still rolling in. Thank you, Yolanda, Stephanie, Chris Dutra, checking in with the Chris and Chris team. The, see this, the Chris is in the house. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Fire up your Friday. Fired up Friday. With Steve Spiro, the master connector. I am Steve Spiro, the master connector. Over the next hour of this Master Connection series, we will take a deep dive into the different ways to connect and network effectively. See us and hear us right now. So LinkedIn, we are on here. We're getting ready. Hear from experts along with Steve Spiro, who went from being shy and introverted to the Master Connector.